everybody welcome to my channel the lulu land my name is uhari and today we're going to be talking about some more delusional people let's get into it shall we before i go into this i just want to share a story time which i promise will tie into the bigger picture when i was 14 years old i would sleep over at a friend's house a lot and at this particular sleepover it was my friend and her cousin who at the time was 15. what had happened was my friend's mother and stepfather had recently gotten married and they had a lot of alcohol left over from the wedding so we were basically sipping drinks off the wine one fateful night her mother and stepfather decided to do a very terrible thing that never works but they did the thing where you basically say here drink right so that the person can get like sick of it like drink until you get sick so you never want to drink again well i took my first sip of the wine and then i kept on going and then i downed a glass of wine and i downed another glass of wine and then i found a bottle of sherry and i was just drinking straight out of it and at this point i was piss drunk right and my friend's mother comes and she's trying to wrestle the bottle from my hand and it's not happening and she slaps me and i look her in the face and i say <laughs> i can't feel a thing <laughs> and i kept running with the bottle <laughs> the last memory i have of that night is running outside uh to their tree that's it after that my <laughs> my brain stopped making memories i just blacked out and woke up in my friend's room on the floor with my pants wet and vomit on my side so yeah it was not a good experience for me but that did not sour me on drinking something very important happened that night i was actually very depressed and when i drank that alcohol that depressed feeling just went away and in the back of my mind before i passed out and my brain stopped making memories there was a connection formed between my pain and the feeling that alcohol gives me and in that moment my pain collided with alcohol and they came together to form alcoholism i was going through a lot of pain i didn't know how to articulate it to the people around me so i wasn't getting any help from the people around me and that connection between pain and alcohol resurfaced once i was in the 12th grade and i was old enough to buy myself alcohol because in south africa the legal age for drinking is 18 and by then i was drinking at night sometimes um particularly when i was like busy with my art because i just figured Ugh, i took art in high school and i didn't see the harm between doing art and drinking a little you know at first it wasn't bad it was maybe you know a little cute little charming in the right way because i wasn't like getting blackout drunk but when i first went to university the depression started and it was hardcore and i wasn't at home and i didn't know that for all these years my father had actually been managing my symptoms of depression because the minute i was living away from him it came back full force and then a memory was triggered and a connection that had been made when I was 14 years old between pain and alcohol was reignited. And from that point on, I started drinking. It started off with me drinking every Friday, then every weekend. A couple of years later, it led to me drinking every single day. It was very hard for me to stop drinking and I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of the people in my life. And I had to learn a new way to socialize. I had to learn how to be around people who were drinking and not drink. I had to make peace with the fact that I have never had a healthy relationship with alcohol. As fun as it can be to be drunk with other people socially, 
when you aren't able to leave the drinks at the party like other people who have a more functional relationship with alcohol when you need to go home and drink more and then wake up the next morning and drink and drink and drink you're not in the same room as everybody else who's drinking they're having fun you're surviving like the stuff is water I mention this because it's very hard to make a significant life change. And I can't imagine how or if I would have been able to survive had I had people in my life who weren't supporting me. If I had people in my life who were making fun of me. If I had people in my life who were othering me while i was struggling i don't know if i would have been able to make it because when you're in the infancy of giving up an addiction making any change is hard particularly when you're trying to move away from something that is a primary coping mechanism and when that has to change you have to dedicate your entire life to it and little things things that seem little to other people aren't to you and you're sensitive in a way that other people don't see a way in which you don't let them see because part of addiction is avoidance of vulnerability you never feel vulnerable if you're always drunk if you feel shy or anything like that you can drink you get confidence i had to learn how to be in a room without that alcohol fueled confidence but I was, I was able to overcome it with the help of some therapy and some medication and a diagnosis and all sorts of other great things that included working with professionals in order to help me get better. And now, over three years and ten months later, I can proudly say that I am living an alcohol free life yay okay what does this have to do with today's topic well let me tell you then once more i am talking about the fat activist jordan underwood and i'm talking about jordan because when i found his channel i found so many different interesting things that i thought i would love to talk about I recently checked and Jordan has taken down all of his content. I don't know if he deleted it or privated it. Either way, if Jordan ever sees this, I hope you put the content back up because I personally learned so much, particularly about lipidemia from Jordan's channel. I also learned a lot about how difficult treatment is and what a journey lipidemia is. And my heart goes out to Jordan. I have a lot of empathy for him because I know that it can't be hard, especially when everybody looks at you like you're responsible for the extent of your fatness. Jordan has lived an entire life of dieting. Jordan has this memory of the first time they were called fat, and I think maybe it was when they were eight. He has a memory of him going to the doctor and the doctor showing him the charts of normal weights and being like, this is where people your age are supposed to be and this is where you are. And that was when Jordan first tried Weight Watchers with their mother, his mother taking him to the meetings and he only went twice. And as somebody who grew up as a fat child, I too know the struggles of being told that you have to lose weight, understanding that you're different from other kids, being made fun of for your weight, having a very difficult relationship with food and dieting. You can imagine that sending a eight-year-old to Weight Watchers isn't exactly the best thing to do. I'm not gonna blame Jordan's mother because our parents are just people who had kids kids having kids you know you don't think about what it's going to be like having a fat kid or what you're supposed to do and i think parents can make a lot of mistakes that end up hurting fat children when they become adults so i think definitely that would be one of them but 
I understand what it's like. It's hard, y'all. Because when you're a fat child, it's like you're set up for problems with food for the rest of your life. Restriction is an inevitable part of your life. And with restriction comes binging. When you start to live this like very polarizing existence, either you're restricting or you stop and you feel guilty and you're hungry and you want to taste everything and you binge you end up in the cycle not to say not to project my fat experience onto everybody else but i know a lot of co-ex fat children who struggle who actually end up in disordered eating patterns Jordan had been struggling with this his entire life and when he was 17 he stopped dieting because he found fat acceptance and fat positivity and found a community online which again I completely understand because when you've been ostracized from society all your life and told that you're wrong who wouldn't want to be embraced you know who wouldn't want that warm feeling of belonging I've been there and I understand what it can be like to be taken up by an ideology when you're very vulnerable and how you can tie your identity to other people to an extent that without them your entire social circle is gone. I think for me an example would be uh, I joined this church when I first went to university and as I kept going to my classes, particularly critical thinking, I started to have doubts. And I eventually got to a point where I officially stopped going to church. I extricated myself from that belief system because of some personal moral contradictions I felt that I was being intellectually dishonest that my life had changed because of this information that I had gained it changed my perspective and I lost a lot of the friends that I had made and church had been my go-to my comfort especially when I was so depressed you know I was drinking, but I was also doing a lot of church. I was trying to feel better. And when I lost my friends, it was hard. So my point is, I was very vulnerable. So it was easy for me to be taken in. I felt like I belonged. And at a time where I had left home, I needed to feel that. And I found that not everything there was actually good for me. And I had to go. And I think Jordan is in a similar position. In the sense that it's getting harder for him to fully and honestly embrace the ideology that he has been living by for the past couple of years. Which is that of it's okay to be super morbidly obese and weight isn't... A, reflection of health and that intentional weight loss is a bad thing intentional weight loss becomes completely stigmatized because again when you are a fat child intentional weight loss is pushed upon you very early because people want you to be healthy and it's not nice psychologically to be bullied or to be fatter than other kids or to have to shop in the adult section for clothes when you're not an adult it's hard. It's embarrassing. Wouldn't it be easy if you could all just lose weight. So you try and you fail or you try and you succeed. But intentional weight loss becomes a trigger. And Jordan has that with intentional weight loss. And what has happened in the fat acceptance movement is that intentional weight loss has been demonized. You're not allowed to want to lose weight. And you're not allowed to put in active effort with the motive of losing weight so you can exercise but exercise for your well-being don't exercise because you want to lose weight and you can eat healthy for your well-being or taste but you can't do it to lose weight trying to lose weight is a bad thing and it works up until a significant health crisis which is something every morbidly obese person will encounter 
it's inevitable. It may take a while for some people, faster for others, but morbid obesity will catch up with you and you will have a health crisis. And that is what happened with Jordan. Jordan reluctantly was forced in a position where he has to do intentional weight loss because most of the specialists that he's seeing, particularly the ones talking about lymphedema and lipidemia, are talking about eating a ketogenic diet. The word diet is like, ah, right? Already Jordan is triggered, which makes sense. We just covered the childhood trauma. And after years of being completely consumed by this ideology, Jordan is confronted with the truth. Jordan wants help. This condition has gotten way out of control. It has consumed his life. And now he has to lose weight. What does Jordan need? Jordan needs a support system. Who is Jordan's support system? People who believe the same things that Jordan believes. Now, a bunch of people who believe that intentional weight loss is a bad thing are the very people that Jordan has to lean on. How does that go, you ask? Well, I will play you the following clip and you tell me. What's so funny, James? It's funny because you're doing intentional weight loss. No, I'm not! No, I'm not! <laughs> Are you gonna laugh at me for this too? What are you doing? Are you gonna laugh at me for not being able to eat chips? Oh my god. <laughs> where do we start with this one? <laughs> no, seriously, where? I showed, I showed the video, that video to my sister. Now, my sister is not a very politically correct person. So when my sister saw somebody who was male presenting, full of chest hair, wearing a dress, and looking all sorts of peculiar, she... <laughs> She lost it and she said some things that I won't repeat <laughs> but you can imagine things that somebody who isn't particularly politically correct would say my sister is the type of person who's trying right she's really trying when I explain for example that despite looking very female presenting Jordan is a man Jordan is a trans man who identifies as a man and goes by he him pronouns as much as I know she called Jordan a him or a he and whenever she trips up on it she corrected herself right so my sister's like bad person she's trying when we back behind doors she might not always say the right thing but she's trying so when she saw this skinny skinny person with long hair this man dressed like a woman in public, laughing at a fat woman trying to lose weight. <laughs> Let's just say, um, I've just realized that people are willing to respect your choices to a certain extent. And when you are so rude, to someone people will take off the politically correct gloves say not this fucking man in a fucking dress who looks like he's never had an extra pound on his body laughing at his friend who has lipodemia and has to for the survival of his life and the improvement of his lifestyle in order for your friend to get back to feeling like himself. He has to go against everything he has been believing for years now. 
Jordan has been going through it, trying to mentally adjust to the fact that he has to diet now. He has to do it. It's the only way that his life is going to improve. He has to do intentional weight loss. How, how is this person a friend? Now, I brought up my history with alcoholism because I truly believe that Jordan is having an equally hard time doing intentional weight loss, being on a diet, having to think, can I eat this? Can I not eat this? Having to focus on food when you have just been eating whatever you want to eat, whenever you want to eat it for years now as a form of self-therapy. In the fat acceptance movement, eating whatever you want, or as they call it, intuitive eating is a good thing, and it's a form of healing from a eating disorder. So when you stop trying to lose weight and you eat whatever you want, whenever you want, you have been cured or liberated. Personally, I understand where they're coming from. I just think these movements tend to be very extremist. And extremism isn't a good reaction to pain. Being extreme against something as a reaction to something that used to cause you pain isn't always, isn't always a good thing. These strong pseudo-political movements, they tend to have extremism because people isolate themselves in their echo chambers. And I think that the current echo chamber that Jordan is in, or at the very least, as of the time those videos were posted, which I think was two months ago. I can't be sure, because Jordan wiped his channel. Laughing at your friend because they're trying to lose weight, to me, feels, when they have to, when they need to, to save their lives, feels like laughing at your friend who's trying to quit cigarettes while puffing smoke in their face because their chips and everything else that Jordan's used to eating it's on the table. Jordan has to sit there and look at that and then eat what's in front of him and what is within the keto diet. That's not easy for somebody who's been for maybe a decade just believing that eating whatever you want is the answer and that means you're healed. It's not easy to say no. It's not easy to self-restrict. We need people who love us to get us through these tough times. And when the people who love you laugh in your face, you know, in the early stages of like my sobriety, my sister stopped drinking with me. My sister stopped drinking for a solid year as a means of support. And whenever we were out and we have situation where and we have situations where we would drink, order a drink, we wouldn't. And my sister helped me acclimatize to life without alcohol. I can't imagine my sister during the first three months of me not drinking alcohol, going out with me, ordering drinks, drinking the drink, and then laughing in my face. That's not love. That's sabotage. Personally, I believe that having people like James, skinny motherfucking people who look like they've never had a problem with excess weight in their life. When you look at somebody who hasn't suffered the pain of obesity, someone like that laughing in your face, that's not empathy. That's not even an ally. What are you even doing here, James? Why are you in fat acceptance? You're not fat. This is the problem. <laughs> That's why I don't fuck with like, when I was a feminist, I wouldn't fuck with male feminists. What are you doing in the room? Just quietly support. Allow us to talk about the problems we're having. And if you have an opinion, make sure it's not one that's destructive. Don't be destructive. 
garments oh no it was just a joke no it's not just a joke when somebody is fresh into a journey and jordan didn't even like decide i decided that i want to stop drinking jordan didn't so much decide that he wanted to start eating keto he had to and he's having this psychological struggle and then he does it despite not wanting to partake in anything that resembles intentional weight loss despite not wanting to do any of that jordan is forced by his health to do that and jordan was in a position where he was changing his diet like you could see in that video and in front of jordan was a supposed friend and a supposed ally who laughed in his face good job james good fucking job that's exactly what your friend who is suffering with stage five lipodemia needs that they need you to laugh in their face for doing intentional weight loss i empathize with jordan a lot again because there's a lot in his life that i can be like oh, i can see that a uh, big part of it also is like the rhetoric he's spouting and how ardent and militant he is about fat acceptance because i used to be the same way but about christianity so and i said some equally shit you know like some crazy stuff right and i i said it because i truly believed it and i thought i was in the right in having those opinions and i tried very much to force those opinions on other people under the guise of evangelism so i know what it's like to spread misinformation purposefully thinking you're helping people i can't judge jordan for any of that these ideas they find people when they're weak and they're vulnerable and they prey on our insecurities and our pain but at the end of the day we don't benefit if we don't take the time to ask ourselves is the situation i am in beneficial for me is it helping me are these people helping me do these people love me or do these people need me to hold a certain set of beliefs in order for them to be able to be in my life there's something quite dichotomous about jordan in the sense that he says he doesn't want to do intentional weight loss but also he wants to do the lymphatic drainage he wants to drain and minimize this lipidemia but he doesn't want to do intentional weight loss is those two things they're not coming together treatment for your lipidemia is wanting intentional weight loss even if it isn't eating and exercising whatever the hell it's still intentional weight loss you still have to do intentional weight loss even if you just ate whatever you wanted to eat if they didn't say you have to do keto you're just going there doing whatever massages they want you to do whatever drainage just that drainage that you want the drainage they're draining something and that thing is mess it is an intentional process of weight loss it's what you need and it's what you desire if you're going to be honest with yourself which you should be i have no problem against jordan but i don't like james jordan if ever you see this you need better friends jordan is not a good friend jordan doesn't know what it's like so jordan laughs in your face but if you were to imagine a different scenario like that of the cigarette and laughing at someone puffing in their face with a drink like i mentioned and you put other people in that scenario not you you can see how those comments are very harmful and the way you laughed back i know that laugh that's the laugh you make when somebody makes a fat joke and you laugh along because you're insecure and it's a defense mechanism can you imagine that you're laughed at by 
society and all your life, all these instances of fat phobia that you have memorized, or they laughed at me for this, that, and the rest, you laughed at all your life for trying to lose weight. You find a movement that says you don't ever have to lose weight. Your health deteriorates to a point where you have to lose weight. And then, and then when you're doing that thing in the beginning that scarred you, which is dieting, somebody who doesn't have to lose weight laughs in your face. And saying, ooh, somebody has to lose weight. Are you doing intentional weight loss? <laughs> have you ever done intentional weight loss? Because either you haven't and you're a dick. Or you have and you're a dick. <laughs> Either way, you're a dick. A dick who looks ridiculous in that dress. It is not form-fitting. And it is not rational. Okay, everybody. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Please like the video if you like it. Dislike it if you do. And please leave a comment below. Once more, thank you for all the increasing support I've been getting. If you want to reach me, my email is on the about page. I don't have any social medias. Because fuck matter. Reddit can suck my dick. And Twitter was always too fast for me. <laughs> uh, as somebody who has bipolar type 2, I never thought that having Twitter was a good thing for me. Because if you catch me on the wrong day, and the meds ain't kicking in, I might say some vile ass shit that I will later regret. So I don't have Twitter. <laughs> and also, it, it sucks. But uh, as somebody who hasn't been on Twitter but gets to see what people say on Twitter, if that dies, I will miss it because y'all say some vile, vile shit on Twitter. <laughs> and I love it. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much.